at you live from Cooking in Kevin's Kitchen. What do you have in store for us today? Okay, we're gonna kind of do a whole bunch of videos back to back. We have this little restaurant down here in Texas called Babe's Chicken. I don't know if you've heard of it, been to it, or anything like that. You go in there and you order your chicken fried meal and it comes with all this yummy stuff. So first off, you get a half a chicken all cut up. So you basically get the four pieces and then you get pretty much all you can eat, mashed potatoes and gravy, um, homemade biscuits, cream style corn, uh, Italian style green beans, you know, the flat, bigger green beans, mm -hmm. and um, um, I believe, oh, and the salad. And the salad is real good too because it's pretty much just lettuce and a vinegar sugar based dressing and that's pretty much all that's in it, uh, salt and pepper. Um, anyway, it's all you can eat and it's a yummy, yummy place to eat. So we're going to make a few videos that kind of does that whole thing. So basically, we're going to start off with our chicken. And the reason why I'm saying we're going to start with our chicken because one of my little s secrets that I like to do that uh, I, I taught my sister this and everything, most people don't do it, is I like to batter my chicken and let it sit for at least 30 minutes. And so that way the batter gets on there real crispy. Well, today we're going to do one thing a little different. We're going to do pan-fried chicken. And we're going to do pan-fried chicken in my nice old big skillet here. See that? Get you a big one now. So we got the skillet. And we're going to cook it there. And the reason being is because I want that yummy gravy. And I'm going to show you the yummy gravy at the end. Because we're going to go through this whole thing. I so we've got to have lots of gravy. So we're going to start off with our chicken. We I've got the pieces cut up. We're going to get them wet. And immediately put them in the flour. Shake it up. And then, like I said, we're going to let it just sit out on the counter for 30 minutes. And then we're going to be ready to fry it. So that's what this first video is about. It's tell you the story and everything that's going on. And then in the second video, I'm going to teach you how to make pretty much, if you don't have cream style corn in your uh, pantry, or if you, you know, you can buy it in the tubes frozen, or you can make it fresh off the cob. You scrape it off the cob. You know, I was taught by... Uh, uh, people in Louisiana had to uh, make your own homemade stuff. So anyway, today we're just going to do it out of the can because that's all I got. It's a cold winter day and I hadn't gone to the store. And then uh, same thing with my green beans. going to be just out of a can. And But we're going to show you the whole setup of the meal basically at the end. So we're going to start off with our chicken pieces. So we're going to get them good and wet. You want them wet. And you don't want to shake too much off it because you need all that water on there. Okay. We'll put it in. I love these zip tuck. These zip bags, man, make it so great for fried chicken or fried deer steak. Any of that yummy stuff like that. Because, man, you just put it in there and zip it. See that? See how quick that was? And like I said, the reason why I'm showing you this part is most people do it and then they'll put it right in the fryer right now. I don't like to do that. I like it to sit there. And it, and it, and it, it makes a better coating. My sister's like, my God, you make the best fried chicken meal I've ever had. She's like, it's better than babes, I swear. And it's like, well, it's because this is one of the reasons. You know, they also deep fry it, which sometimes I do. I do always make fried, deep fried chicken. But today, like I said, we're going to, when I make my deep fried chicken, I'm always making it like another restaurant we used to have. Or, yeah, they're still around, I guess. Good old Henderson's Chicken, boy. If you know anything <laughs> about Henderson's Chicken. Okay, and I make a, a copycat Henderson's Chicken Meal. Uh, they're in Dallas, and I don't want to drive up there anymore, so I just do it myself. And you you make fried chicken, deep fried. You put bread on the bottom, just regular old sandwich bread. You put your chicken on top. You put all those uh, french fries. And then uh, the sweet topping is mm. all the pickles and jalapenos and stuff. And then I like to personally make a little sandwich out of that. Some people just eat pieces and this and that. And the other. I like to make a little sandwich out of that and eat it. Boy, oh, it's my good. gosh. And that's so my deep fried chicken. But today, like I said, we're making pan fried chicken so we can have the gravy. So next video when we come back, we're going to be doing our corn. So Babe's Chicken Copycat. Coming at you live, cooking in Kevin's kitchen. Okay, here we go. We're off to making our own cream style corn, basically. So I got corn in a can. Normally you'd have cream style corn. I don't have it. Um, I, I make it fresh. I have made it fresh many times straight off the cob. And what you do is you just get you a corn cob out the field, however you want to do it. Get you a big old bucket and start scraping that corn with all the juices and everything. And then the secret is you got to fry it in a little frying pan, right? With lots of butter, salt and pepper, a little bit of milk just to give it a little... Uh, uh, Creaminess. 
Not, yeah, creaminess, but not just mm -hmm. that little liquid is what I was trying to say. I couldn't okay. get it out. Okay, so, but today, here's how we're going to do it. You can put this in a, a blender or a mixer or anything like that. Well, I don't want it that cream-style corn. I want it more like I made it Louisiana, out-in-the-field style, cream-style corn. So, basically, what we're going to do. I'm going to pour about half of this out where I can get this up in here, right? And I'm just going to add me a dash. I got evaporated milk here. Makes it a little more creamy. Put a dash of that in there. Okay, and I'm just going to go to beaten. I'm gonna beat this up, give you some juices out of that corn. Well, make a little mess here. Like I said, you can put it in food processor too, but I was just afraid of getting too much. I don't want it really beat down too much. This may take a minute. But... Okay. See, down on the bottom is where all the good stuff is. Nice. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. I just wanted to make room. So I guess I'll put less in there and probably go a little easier. I'm just excited for the video. <laughs> okay, go to beating. Yeah, that works better. So that's corn. I do a third of a can. Like I said, I just got excited for the video. So all that yumminess is down on the bottom. And the reason why I'm doing it like this instead of food processor is because I want some bigger chunks in there. I want it like I scraped it off the, the cob, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's that. And we got one more. You know what we're going to do is we're going to fry this for about 35 to 45 minutes. So I got my chicken sitting in the thing for 30 minutes. Right, and while that's going on, my corn will be cooking. Then when I'm going to fry that chicken, I'm going to have my mashed potatoes done. And then... Y'all know how to make mashed potatoes. I'll me teach you that. Except I will tell you something. I got a story. Might as well tell you one. <laughs> I've been making mashed potatoes all my life. It's on Facebook one day. Saying I'm fixing to make some mashed potatoes. Karen's dad comes on there. He says, you got to make mashed, steamed mashed potatoes. I'm like, steamed mashed potatoes? What are you talking about? I've always boiled them in water and da-da-da. He's like, no. You steam them, and it keeps all that starch and everything, and then it just makes a better mashed potato. I was like, well, shoot, I'll try it. Just steam it 20 minutes, you know, like you would boil it for 20 minutes, and you make your mashed potatoes the same way. He ain't lying, man. It does make the best. So I did learn something. So I do. I will never boil a potato again. I will steam it, and it makes so much better. <laughs> so much better. So awesome. I guess I did tell you that. So cut them up in chunks like you normally would. Put them in your little steamer. Steam them. I like to go 22 minutes, pull them out, butter, salt and pepper, milk, just like you would anyway. And I always, when I make mashed potatoes, use one of these guys. I don't ever. Yeah. yeah. I, I, sometimes I use a tater masher, but I'd rather use a wedge because it keeps it just a little bit chunky. Okay, so then we're going to make mashed potatoes. And at the very end, we'll make the gravy. And that's really what brings everything together. Wonderful. That corn smells amazing. You can amazing. already see how creamy it kind of is. Oh, I wish I could get these good. broke up just a little more. I may have to put a cup in because the video is taking too long. But anyway, you get the gist of it. So like that. And then we're going to use at least, because of this one can, we're going to use a half stick of butter. We're going to put a half stick of butter in there. And we have most of the milk we need. And the evaporated milk just works better because it's, uh, like Karen said, makes it more creamy. Mm -hmm. Along with the butter. Yeah. Makes good stuff now, y'all. So, you just want to cut this up. And if that's not enough butter, I may have been if I hadn't put more. I'm going to go and put more. I can tell right now. I'm going to need probably three quarters of a stick of butter. That's right. And then what we want is you want your good old pepper. <laughs> your good old chunky pepper for this. Not that powdered stuff. You want the good old chunky pepper like that, right? Mm hmm and then good old sea salt, chunky sea salt. About that much. I don't ever measure nothing. And then probably that much. And then we're going to put that on boil. And we're, we're going to turn it. The reason why I'm doing it in this non stick is because I don't want it to stick. Uh, my pots are real good, so they don't stick. We're going to cook this probably a good 35 to 45 minutes because we're just going to make it mush. And so we're going to put a lid on it and we're going to cook it. So that's the start of it, and I'm fixing to get that going. Cream style corn. 
we are cooking with Kevin's Kitchen. What you got going on there? All right, this is the third uh, item on the menu of Babe's Chicken. This is the salad. This is basically the first part you get along with the biscuits. I will do biscuits in a video. I'm just out of uh, what I need for the ingredients for the biscuits, but I will do a biscuit video. I'm very good at making biscuits, and I should have the stuff, but I don't. I may try to make it. Who knows? Okay, so we got our corn's going. So now we're going to make our salad, and this is what they do. They just take regular old iceberg lettuce, and they cut it up pretty chunky. See, about that big. Okay. Probably inch and a half by inch and a half, and you want it chunky like that. And basically, this is all they do. I got me two teaspoons of sugar. However much pepper you think you want in yours. Stay that way, buddy. Okay. And I'm gonna use a little powdered pepper too. Um, you don't really need salt because we're using vinegar, but I use salt and everything, so a couple of dash of salt. And then vinegar. Hey, and just regular white vinegar. And Daddy's doing a video, hold on. I got, I got, I made a little character. <laughs> That's awesome. These are the little, these and are you only awesome. need as much vinegar as That's you awesome, need uh, salad dressing. Because basically you're just making salad dressing. So there you go. You wait for that uh, sugar to do, to dissolve. See, it's still not all dissolved. It takes a little minute. You've got to sit here and stir. Yummy. And this is the whole dressing for that salad. Wow. And then you just pour it on and eat it. Just, it's actually know, very can. good, y'all. Yeah. And so let me taste. I've had it a hundred times. Well, I've had it five times. It's perfect. <laughs> so, basically, a half a cup of vinegar, two tablespoons of uh, sugar, and then however much pepper you like. And that's really all you need. Kevin's Kitchen. What do you got going on here, Kev? All right, we're headed to the frying process on our chicken. Yep. Got to be at least 380 degrees. I'm about 390. I'm going to go ahead and turn it down a little bit. We've been in the uh, bag and shaking it. Oh, yeah, I had the light on and I turned it off. Uh, been in the bag for 30 minutes. We're going to take it out, give her a good shake in the bag. What do you mean? Grease has got to be 380 Frying degrees, chicken. okay, chicken. to 400. You don't want it any hotter because then it's going to burn. And you don't want any less because then it ain't going to fry as good, okay? Mine was 390 when I put it in. Be careful, Daddy. I am, buddy. This is what I do right here. Be careful. Oh. Okay. I know it's hot, huh? Is that powder? Is that powder or is it? Is that powder? Flour, boy. Powder? Flour. Oh, powder. Flour. I was going to say flour, too. I was going to okay, say and we're going to let that sit in there for about... Uh, Five minutes or so until you can already see it crisping it up, right? Heaven, please. We're crisping it up, right? And then we don't want to lose all this. So as soon as it crisps up, about three to five minutes, we're going to take a flip it so that we can keep all that good flour we got going on right now. Sounds great. So that's 30 minutes in. I got my mashed potatoes up. This is about how big I cut them just to show you. And I'm steaming them. As you can tell, I'm steaming them. I'll never boil the potatoes again. <laughs> cool. Hey. Yeah, I'm going to turn my grease back up. Um, just give it a couple more minutes and we'll stay with the video and then we'll turn that way you can see. Powder and flour rhymes. Yes, sir. Come on. Okay. okay. Look at that. Like I said, we're just doing this kind of quick because we don't want to lose that top coating. So all the splatter. There we go. Okay. So, from this point on, we're going to cook it for about 12 minutes or to 15 minutes. Already, I've got my pan ready. As soon as mine's done, because I have to make the gravy, please put it on a, a drip rack. Do not put it on paper towels or anything like that. It will make it soggy. That is a trick. You need to put it on a wire rack and let it drip into this, and it will stay crispy. Trust me, it will stay crispy. If you put it on paper towels, immediately they're going to go soggy. Okay? So... That's going to be ready. going to put it on here, and then we're going to make the gravy. We've got our mashed potatoes. Look here. There's my green beans. we got green beans. we got bacon grease. we got garlic, onion powder, salt, pepper. Look, it looks yummy. Oh, and a good God. pat of butter. Oh, I always put God. a good pat of butter in. Okay? So we've got our green beans. And then I already showed you the salad. Here's our corn. Look how good our corn is looking. Coming right now. Look at that. Ooh. Look how yummy that cream style corn looks. It is done. It is ready to eat. Oh, it's yummy. Yeah. 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 Ye
cream style corn. Aspen's getting in there, scoping it out. Okay, so we're fixing beyond the, as soon as that's done in the gravy, we'll head to the gravy. We'll show you the uh, chicken when it's done, and then we'll head to the gravy, and then we're going to put it on there, and we're going to eat it. Coming at you live, it's Kevin's Kitchen. Here we are, y'all. 12 minutes in. Look at this fried chicken. Look at how pretty it is. Got the mess going. Woo! All right. Right there. Look at that. Oh yeah. I mean, I always keep the towel right here because I wipe this up real quick. So, we got our uh, dripping plate here. Look how yummy that is. 12 minutes. Hopefully it'll be done first. Like I said, it's going to sit here while I make my gravy, so it's still going to cook a little bit. Pan fried chicken. Look at that. Look at how pretty that is. Not burnt, see? It's got a little bit of dark right there, but it's not burnt. And the reason being is because I got it to 380. I let it cool down, and then I put it on five, and then I put it on three, and then I put it on low. Okay? And we don't want to burn it. So you just need to be, look at that. Look at the bottom of that. Look how yummy that is. It's perfect Oh, my goodness, boy. Okay. Got two stories to tell you now since the chicken's done and we're gonna move on to our mashed potatoes. Say goodbye to the chicken. All right, Haley's over here bothering me in my video, right? And I'm like, what is your son? Don't say nothing, don't say nothing. I get done, you know what he says? Daddy, your apron's backwards. <laughs> I should have listened to him the whole time. Look, now you can see my apron. I had, my boy had to tell me his own backwards and I wasn't listening to him, so I had to apologize to my boy for that. Okay. The second story is, my mom always told me, son, I knew I was in trouble with you and the cooking. 11 years old, she come in the kitchen, home from work, and I made a family of one, two, three, four, five, a full pan-fried chicken meal dinner with mashed potatoes, gravies, a whole bit. At 11 years old, my mama said, I knew right then you was going to do something. Well, I never followed that and did anything. I just learned how to cook for myself and my family, and that's what I like to do. So... Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to take most of this grist. We're, we're going to keep all those nice drippings, that I mean, uh, little crunchies we got in the bottom. We're going to pour 90% of this grease out. We're going to put a quarter cup of uh, pal, uh, flour in here, and we're going to fry that up. So here in just the next video, we'll go straight to the gravy. Cooking with Kevin's Kitchen. All right, we're on to another side of Babe's Copycat Chicken House here. Uh, we got our mashed potatoes. Look, they're all done. Looking yummy. Okay, been in there for 22 minutes exactly. We're going to pour the water out of our pan. We don't need that water. But we want our hot pan. The reason why we want a hot pan is because we're going to put all our butter in here. Okay, we're going to put about a half a stick of butter. I got all these little chunks from when I've been uh, messing around here today. A little bit earlier, I freaked the family out. I said, you know what? I got all the ingredients. You know what I'm gonna make? I'm gonna make Rocky Road candy. And I made milk chocolate Rocky Road candy and I made white chocolate Rocky Road candy. Oh and uh, it is so yummy. So I made that for them as a treat today. We can show that here in a minute. But yes. I want to get done with my... Okay, so we got our taters are done. We look how much butter I got in there, okay? And then we're gonna use powdered pepper for this. One, two, three. And then same with the salt. One, two, three, okay? Three teaspoons, basically, whatever. That's just the way I do things. I don't ever measure a whole lot. Okay, then I put my taters, right? And they were already rinsed. I rinsed them before I steamed them, so they're ready to go. Okay. Get rid of that guy real quick. And then we need probably a half a cup of milk. We're gonna start with that right there. I'm cooking with canned milk tonight. I went to go to the store yesterday. I'm on no gas. I go to the store to go get milk and bread. There's no gas, there's no milk, there's no bread. So I had to come on with canned milk, but that's okay. We don't care if we're doing this video anyway. We already planning on doing it. All right, look for my whisk, I'm sorry. So I like to whisk mine. I don't use a tater masher or nothing like that. So I mash it up like that. My sister's boy, she told me, God, they love your mashed potatoes. They won't even eat mine. I said, well, when I told you how to make mashed potatoes. I don't know why my mashed potatoes are any different from anybody else's. But, okay, you saw what I did. I busted them up. Now, I'm only going to cream them for a little bit because I, I don't like a lot of 
chunky stuff, but I like my mashed potatoes with a little bit of chunk to them, right? Just like that, and we're done. Look at that. And it's already got all your spices and everything in it. I'm gonna put the lid on it. Now, that's another one. We're gonna move on to our gravy. Back at you. We are cooking in Kevin's kitchen. Where are you at in the process oh, here, Kev? Oh, here's the good part. This is the magic of everything, the mm. gravy. You can make anything taste good with gravy. Oh, Even yeah. a dog turd, probably. But anyway, <laughs> that's my little joke I like to tell. Anyway, okay, you see I poured out almost all of that oil. But look at all my young, yummy, yummy crispies down there, okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start off with this quarter cup of flour. I'm making four cups of gravy, just so y'all know. I probably need a half cup. Okay, we're gonna go with a half cup flour. Okay. We're just gonna mix that in like that. What we're doing is making a roux right now. We're gonna fry it up. See how I got it nice and hot? It's all mm -hmm. frying. Sizzling. Sizzlematic. That's great. Sizzle nizzle. Okay, here we go. Here comes the other one. Now, we got garlic powder. I don't ever measure, so just count with me. One two, three, four. Why? It's four cups. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. Onion powder. One, two, three, four. Okay. Don't need a lot of pepper. One, two of that kind. And then same with the powder. One, two. Salt. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, seven of those. Okay, we're gonna go on and start frying. I don't want to burn. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this all the way down to low. Look, I got one more thing. A little bit of Lowry's. I always use Lowry's in my gravy. It makes it so yummy. One, two, three, four. Everything's four. If you notice, it's just the, the pepper, if you notice, was uh, two and two because they didn't want too much. Here we go, look at that roux. It's perfect. Mm. Here comes the magic. Watch, listen, we got it hot. Got to do it all. Oh, here's my next thing. Most people use, some people use water, some people use milk. I say I use both. So I use half milk, half water. It's just the way I've always made my gravy. Four cups, right in. This mess is, that's what makes the gravy. Look at that. Now, we don't need all this one night. So what we're going to do, we put it in the fridge, right? Well, it's a little bit thick the next day. Just add the same thing. If you need a half a cup of liquid, just put a quarter cup of water, quarter cup of milk. And your gravy will be just fine the next day. Look at that. Homemade, semi-brown gravy. Looks amazing. Right there, that's the yummy. Because that's the thing that makes it good. I took a photo of it. Cool. I took a picture of it. Very good, son. And then, look what we got here. We always got to have that. That's what we display around these house. You display what you want. That's what we display. Okay, so we're almost at the plate and process of doing our uh, beige chicken. Uh, we're going to get our place ready. We're going to get everything moved to the table, and then we're going to show you basically the, the, the only thing I did not make in this video was the homemade uh, biscuits. And I am going to do a deal on homemade biscuits. I'm, now I'm going to do it this weekend. And then guess what's coming next week? I already promised Karen. She's like, I can't believe it. Oh, yeah. Homemade. Hand rolled. Homemade. <gasps> chicken and dumplings. <laughs> Show you from scratch now scratch everything don't buy no biscuits no no that stuff i'm gonna show you how to roll them out and do everything so we got a wow. gravy we got a gravy we got a mashed potatoes we got our green bean stay right there oh she didn't get the green bean we got our corn we got our chicken All right Okay. Nice. And then right here, I'm going to show you the last part. Well, this is really the first part, <laughs> but we're going to call it the last part because we have to be ready. Remember, we had our uh, lettuce already cut up and ready to go. I'm going to show you what to do here. You just stir this back up, make sure it's, and just pour it in there. Come on, that's it. Right there, and it's ready to eat. That's exactly how they serve it. You put it in your deal, oh, and they bring so it to you good. like this, and it's ready to go. And it's very basic, but it is so yummy. It's as good as those country... Uh, uh, cucumbers, tomatoes, and onions that we eat all the time. So this is just as good, let me tell you. You just use a touch more sugar, it's a little more sweet. Okay, so we're fixing to set our table. We got our gravy going. If you notice, I remember, remember I said I put that on low because I didn't want it to burn. I'm gonna turn it back up to three because look at that, it's almost ready. I like it a little bit thicker. And that's homemade gravy. And so we're fixing to plate up and do us some babes chicken. Woohoo!
Thank you.